guys, right now I am in my dyeing studio and I am working on organizing um, yarn into individual packages for my new sock set club that I just um, released in the previous update. I've got lots of yarn I'm working with here and little packages and all the order forms and I'm getting all the yarn uh, sorted so that way it's ready to go. So I have I have these like little uh, packages like zipper pouches that you get like sheets in. Um, I save those whenever I get a new set of sheets or anything that comes with one of these but these I actually buy in bulk on Amazon um, and I use them to store yarn um, just in general but it's perfect for organizing my sock club membership or my sock set club memberships into individual little containers. So each one of these will hold one individual's um, membership yarn. So that means that for all of the people that purchase a six month full membership, all of their six months worth of sock set yarn is in one container with their invoice on top and I store it on my shelf and it's ready to go. So that's kind of what I'm doing right now. I'm just getting the yarn organized. I'm super excited about this um, sock set club. It's the first ever for Fiber for the People. I've never done any kind of yarn subscription club before, and so this is awesome. Um, but I'm really excited about the theme. I'm actually basing it around colorful. I'm actually basing it around colorful celebrations around the world. I watched like a, a documentary, and they were talking about all these different, you know, festivals and celebrations that they have around the world. And every single one that they talk about has like the best color. And I thought it would be fun for um, inspiration. So I chose my six. There's going to be a maximum of six, and I created little cards. Uh, to help me kind of get inspiration for each. I'm not going to show you in too much detail because vlog episodes are coming where I work on each of these individual colorways. I'm going to do a little vlog to show like my process with coming up with the colorways and I will release those vlogs the uh, month following each of those particular sock sets being delivered to their uh, members. But I'm really, I'm really excited about it. It's gonna be a lot of fun. You can actually join until the 30th of June. So if, if you're seeing this and you wanna join, head over to fiberforthepeopleyarn.com, go to the club tab at the top of the page, and there is a whole bunch of information and details about how this works and the place where you can um, subscribe. Uh, you can either pay in full for three to six months or you can just be a monthly membership. Um, so definitely check out that. Uh, if you're interested but yeah that's kind of what i'm up to today and then i'm also kind of planning out the rest of my schedule for this week because i have a shop update on the um the 21st uh at 7 p.m pacific standard time so i'm excited about that too so that's what we're up to about this stuff. I'm excited about every update. I feel like if you ask me when I'm prepping for any given update, I'm going to say I'm super excited about this update because always the same, but that's okay because that means I love what I do. But I'm super excited about this update because I'm bringing back the Go Nights Go sock sets in larger quantities so people have a little bit more of an opportunity to snag them. Um, I am starting a new colorway. I haven't done a new colorway. Go Nights Go is a new colorway, but that was just more kind of in honor of the new Las Vegas hockey team, but I haven't actually designed a new colorway in a couple updates or so, and that's what I love about doing this, is coming up with new colorway ideas, and so I'm gonna be doing that. I have like, I'm kind of stewing on the idea of doing something with like a a very pastel minty color with maybe some like black and fluorescence. I'm, I don't know. I'm, I'm thinking about what I'm going to do. I kind of wrote down some notes and whenever I write down notes of colorway ideas, they like read really strange, uh, you know, pale, you know, spearmint with splashes of fluorescent yellow and bits of black. I, it's like I'm describing like some kind of a diseased limb or something. It's really strange, but they're in my little notebook I have whenever I kind of like outline like all the things that I'm going to do for each of the given updates I like. This is Angus's attempt at helping me design colorways. Um, but I always am writing down, you know, notes on ideas, like images that come to my mind or photographs that I see that make me constantly like, think of uh, colorway ideas and so I write them down like that and it helps. But, um, but yeah, that's kind of like the latest is 
something with black, something with mint, and then some way of incorporating fluorescence into that, whether it be with speckles or just other, you know, bits of color throughout the yarn. I'm playing around with doing that. Um, we'll see how it goes. I'm not sure exactly what method I'm gonna use to do that, but that is my goal. Right now, I am sorting out my yarn, getting it ready to hang on my garment rack over there, which is where I keep it before I dye it. Um, I always have, there's always my prep day. So I have my dye week, which is my shop update dye week, where I dye all my yarn for my shop update. And then on the first day of that week is always my prep week. And if you remember watching back, if you've been sticking with Wool Needles hands, uh, since the beginning, I had a vlog series when I first started the business, I first started dyeing yarn called Making Progress. And um, in the later uh, episodes of that, I talk a little bit about my process for preparing for a shop update. And it's evolved a little bit, you know, because I've had to prepare for larger quantities since then. But ultimately, it's kind of stayed pretty similar because it's, you know, it's a way that works for me. and. I like to keep very organized and that was always kind of my approach since the beginning so that's how I do it. So right now I am just getting these guys put on shower curtain rings. That's my go-to for keeping my yarn kind of like orderly while I dye it. I'm going to hang them on my garment rack and be ready to go for tomorrow when I start dyeing this yarn. day two of this little vlog that we have going on. Um, I'm out here, I yesterday I prepped, and today I'm ready to start dyeing. We are doing cactus flower right now. I love dyeing this colorway, super popular in the shop for really good reasons. So I'm gonna dye up some cactus flower. My son and my husband, so Angus and Brandon, are at swim lessons, day one of swim lessons today. It's a, a two week deal, four days a week. So excited to hear about uh, how that goes. Ronan is sleeping right now, fingers crossed that he takes a good nap. Um, but if not, hey, it's okay, things like that happen. Also, if you watched uh, the Solar Dead yarn vlog that I just uploaded recently, if you commented on suggestions on what I should do next to try and dye yarn using only the heat outside, I have listened. I'm excited to do some more experimentation with that, so more coming soon on that, so keep posted. So right now I'm adding my acids to my yarn. I'm actually adding citric acid and this is called sodium sulfate. It's another really great leveling agent whenever you're dyeing yarn. A uh, little tips from the dyeing studio leveling agent uh, video is coming out soon, so keep posted for that.
so I'm dealing with a spot of guilt right now. Um, and, it's, and it sucks. When you run a business from your home and you have a family uh, that's home, when you're working, um, it gets really hard sometimes, especially when your little ones are little uh, and, um, and they, and they want your attention and, and this and that. And I, uh, I walked in to get a snack and my son's having lunch and um, he just got back from swimming lessons. And he like wants to play, and my husband will tell him like, you know, no Angus, Mama's working, um, and it kind of bums him out a little bit, and it bums me out a lot. <laughs> and I think that it's a blessing that I can do this from home and be here for my children. But it's these times when you have to kind of escape into your work world, which I love this so much. Um, and sometimes I think that makes me feel guilty too because I really love being out here and in this element. Um, but it, I don't know, it really sucks. I don't know if you've experienced this before. You can chat with me about it. Um, I'll be down in the comment section if you have anything to say about it, but uh, it's a bummer. But I, I'm, I can also tell you that at the end of the day, you know, when I'm with my family and I'm, you know, partaking in everything that is having a family and being a mother and being a wife and all of that, I look back on the accomplishments of my day and it makes me really, really proud to be able to do all of that um, and be home at the same time, you know, because I can I can easily stop what I'm doing, pause what I'm doing, and be inside if I need to. Like it can it can be done. I don't know. I'm blessed. I'm absolutely blessed. But it doesn't keep you from feeling guilty from time to time. So, kind of experiencing a spot of guilt. But in not only having this like heart to heart moment with you, <laughs> if you are dealing with this, if this is something that you deal with, and maybe you. You know, maybe you're a stay-at-home mom who also runs a business. I have a, a song recommendation for you, and I can't play it here because I obviously don't have the rights to it. Um, but I'll link down below in the description box, and I'll just put the name of it on the screen. It's a song called "Woman" by Diana Gordon. It's explicit. It has some like bad words in it, but um, it's really great. If you do what I'm doing right now, or something similar to this, where you run your own business and you're a mom and you're dealing with all these other things, like you definitely need to check out this song, Woman, because it's super inspiring and motivational. And like, yeah, it's kind of dirty, but not like crazy dirty, but you know, I mean, it's it's got an explicit rating, so don't listen to it when you're with your kids. Just listen to it when you're in like your realm, you're in your place. It gets you kind of pumped up, but it also just makes you realize how like strong uh, we can be. Like as women, like how um, much we are capable of doing, not only multitasking, which is completely something we're amazing at, but just how we can take all of that and put it towards something positive and something enriching. So if you're ever feeling doubts um, and you just need a little something to pick you up, a good motivational song, check this song out. I was just listening to it a second ago. I was like sulking into my dye pots. So if you order a skein of yarn from one of these patches, you might literally have my, you know, tears in it. Super gross, but anyway, I was kind of sulking a minute ago, and then that song came on, and it lifted my spirits and made me realize, like, don't sweat it. You're, you're doing good things. So, here's to you, and here's to all of us, you know, men and women who are trying to run businesses from their homes and balance it all. Here's to us because we're doing good things. All right, so I'm actually for the first time using my new uh, digital pH meter um, that I, I just did a little unboxing video for this. I'm gonna go ahead and test my water. I'm actually, these are my dye pots for my cactus flower on my gold Stellina base. The acid I'm using here is actually vinegar. I don't use citric acid for gold Stellina because I don't want it to eat the Stellina. Um, but whenever I add vinegar to a dye pot, I always want to test the pH more so than when I do citric acid. I'm pretty comfortable with where that's at. So I'm, I'm hoping that these are between three and a half and uh, four on the pH scale. That's kind of my ideal sweet spot. So I'm gonna go ahead and test it out. Let's see. Okay, right on the money. I don't know if you can see that, but it is right on the money. So there is my reading, 3.9, perfect. So let's just chat a minute about my love and hate relationship with the gold Stellina yarn that I sell in my shop called Gilded. When it comes to knitting with it and looking at how beautiful it is when it's dyed, no problem. Absolutely love it. Getting it out of the soak pot or soak buckets drives me nuts. I'm telling you there's something about the Stellina fiber that causes it to be a really like 
tangly skein, I guess you could say. I keep all of my skeins um, on shower curtain rings when they're soaking and when I'm dyeing them to kind of keep them organized. But sometimes this gold Stellina yarn, the little gold Stellina fibers, they stick to one another um, sometimes. And it really creates a perfect environment for a tangled skein. And uh, that's what this looks like. So I'm gonna pull this out and you'll see in just a second what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna pull it out, right over here. Nice, 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 nice. Oh, we've hit a roadblock right here. This kind of is separate from the rest of the skin. You see that? It's an absolute nightmare. It makes me a crazy person. So I need to fix that before I can move on. Slows things down, makes me crazy. Okay, so I'm getting somewhere. I think I've worked out most of the issues. Now it's just about evening it out. And honestly, sometimes when this happens, I won't fix it completely until after the skein has come out of the dye pot and I've spun it mostly dry because it's a lot easier to work with it when it's not so wet like this, but I really want to kind of just get it a little evened out. If I were to put some Euclid in my hands and kind of run that through the yarn as I try to detangle it, it would smooth out the fibers and make it a little bit easier to detangle, but I don't want to put Euclid on the yarn prior to dyeing it because it's adding oils back into the yarn um, that I don't really necessarily want in there when I'm dyeing the yarn. So that doesn't really, that's not really something that I want to do right now, but I could definitely do it when I'm done dyeing this and I'm soaking it in the Euclid solution. I could use that as an opportunity um, to detangle the yarn. Alright guys, I'm going to spin out these last skeins of cactus flower and then I'm going to finish up my dyeing for today and I have a manicure scheduled for today. I shoot the podcast tomorrow morning and so I want my nails to look nice. Don't forget to check out the shop update. It's going to be Thursday, 7pm uh, Pacific Standard Time. Get your hands on some cactus flower, but I'll see you guys next time. Bye!